All righty. Welcome back. Today, uh, just at the top of the video, I want to put forth the disclaimer that this is going to be pure and simple, a highlight video of some of the best games. So anyway, let's get to opening these spotlight caches and see how many it takes. Nice, one for one, I will take it. Okay, we are up against Miltino. We have a pretty good starting hand. And they have Red Hulk, okay. Hmm, let's get our Daredevil down here. We have options next turn. We probably hold Negasonic. Cosmo and Storm. Okay, I think I... Storm left. And then I can Cosmo and Sunspot next turn. Oh, they're hella discard. Hmm. They have priority. So I think this is the play. Yeah, Dracula is going to be tough. And this deck doesn't have a Lyoth. So I could walk down one location and Cosmo another. Jubilee. And I have priority. We're going to snap back into this because what I'm going to do with priority is I'm going to play Professor X right. And then I'm going to play Cosmo mid. And we will see if we can stop. Or we definitely will stop them. And then it's going to be just how much do they soak on... Our, oh, there it is. There's the Jeff. Okay, so now it's just going to be... Can I prevent... They're Dracula. This is just a gamble. So we're going to soak one energy. We're going to play Cosmo mid. We're going to play Jeff right. We're going to soak one. We'll get up to eight. Now let's see how this plays out. Block the Hella. Ooh, what a strong win. Man, okay, well, this game's getting included. Uh, this this worked perfectly. Wow, this worked perfectly. We were able to control. We locked down two locations. We cornered Hella into the only location she could be played at. We had priority going in. Soaking one, clearly mattered with sunspot because their discarded card was only five corvus and so they were just willing to roll the dice because hella would bring back power here and left most likely fantastic win yep. eight cuber okay we're up against jw stillwater Luke's bar is hilarious with this deck. Uh, I'd need to manage my hand space, actually, if I'm going to play White Widow into Luke's bar. Actually, I can get one of these cards to stick.
Yeah, I can get one of these cards to stick, so that's what we'll do. Okay, Jeff into Sanctum is good. We will play out White Widow. Now, if this is an Annihilus deck, Daredevil, okay. Altar of Death. There's my Annihilus. Which I do have armor. If I want to go that route. I want one of my cards to stick right, though. So if I do Hood... One, two, three, four, five, six. No. Oh, because I'm playing White Widow. Yeah, so I'll have seven cards in my hand. And White Widow will stay in Luke's bar. Hood comes back, my hand is full. And now White Widow sticks in Luke's bar because I don't have hand space. And now I want eight energy next turn. So I need to play two cards into Altar of Death. One, two. And we will play Jeff here. Plus two energy on turn five. I will have nine energy. Okay, that works. And then next turn, I will play armor and red Hulk right. Armor, Red Hulk, and Demon Right. In turn, they can't Professor X me. So the most they could do is Annihilus. But that just means I lose left, and in all likelihood, I win right. But they also could Goblin me. Because I'm playing Armor and I have priority. Okay, they have their own Jeff. I have priority. Ugh. How does Supergiant work into... I should win. I wonder how Supergiant works into... Oh, that's next turn? Don't reveal until all cards played next turn. Okay, that wouldn't work. So do I move Jeff over here? I think I move Jeff over here. Because then these Widow Kisses turn into zeros. Just play the demon here. I think this wins. Oh, that's hilarious because they filled up the location. <laughs> well, if they had to fill the location, this would have won because the widow's kisses would have flipped and been zeros on my side, so I would have won five to zero. This really showcased uh, the power of this deck. I like it. This one I will definitely make a dedicated video for.
Okay, Shadow. Cherry's Lab is good for Green Goblin. Okay, starting hand. Let's get Scorpion down. We will play into the unknown. How many cards did we get? Four cards, okay. Hmm. I will play Cyclops here since I know they have to play here this turn. We will... Maybe we avoid Shuri's Lab and try to clog the middle. Okay, what kind of deck is this? I will clog, try to clog the middle. Snap into this. My Cyclops will go off on magic. And ultimately we have Red Hulk for Shuri's lab. And if need be, I can play armor there. Okay, this is good. We will just play our Widow, let the Cyclops go off one more turn. Okay, so we can definitely win mid. A-bomb is three. Hmm. So I could play A-bomb mid. And armor here. The Cyclops will go off again. My last turn is Red Hulk and Wasp. I can win mid with Wasp. Since she is worth two total power. Oh, they sandmanned me nice. Okay, I should have played Wasp last turn. The safest play is just mid, and then can they get over... How much power do they need to play? Because Cyclops goes off twice. So I am up 13. They need to play a 16 power card here. Or... Cannonball? No, Cannonball wouldn't work either. I think we just do this. Yeah. Playing mid was always our safest play. Nice effective win. Yep. Uh, and clearly you see the reason why this was the best place to win. Uh, if I had played Red Hulk left, uh, what was 23 times 2, 46. Oh, I actually would have won left because the Nebula would have been 2 less. And it actually would have been more than 46 because I would have got the plus 4. So I think it would have been 50 with Red Hulk. But this was always the safest play because if they, let's say they had Cannonball or something that could move me from this spot, or even, uh, no, Eliath wouldn't have worked. But Cannonball is what I was afraid of. Cannonball could have pushed this card 
right, so I still would have been losing mid, and they would have won left. So I just had to hope that they couldn't go bigger than 16 here, or what is this, 17, 15, 16. So they needed 16 points of power, or maybe 15 for the tiebreaker. And uh, there are no cards for that, that people play at least, so... Okay, we have Obi Juan Khan Obi. Hmm. I will get down my Jeff here. Okay, New York is movable, so I want to funnel everything mid to reduce the unknowns on turn six. Hmm. How do I want to do this? I will play armor mid. I will play Spider Ham here, Iron Fist here. Opponent snapped. The goal, what I'm trying to do is get priority so I can pull off a Galactus next turn. We will see how successful I am. I think we just pull it off now. Move the Jeff first, maybe to get the Baxter building bonus. And then we follow up Galactus with Green Goblin and another card. Or maybe Red Hulk if I draw into him. Wow, we pulled it off. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> oh, we got him. Now, can we pull out the win? That is the question. Please forgive me, Obi-Wan. Please. Okay, pure negativity. Let's do it. Green Goblin first. That way if they can't fill. Okay. Perfect. But this is some low power. We got him. White Widow came in just for the cherry on top. So my verdict on this deck is uh, don't use it. <laughs> Newsflash, White Widow does not put Galactus over the top. Uh, Galactus is just Galactus. So on to the next deck. Alrighty, we have Jur. Play Nebula to the far right. Uh, 
I think I played Jeff. Let's get the Krakoa bonus out of the way. Nice. Nebula into New York is fantastic. All right, plus three on Hulk. I didn't necessarily need that. He's kind of strong on his own. So because I have Red Hulk, that's probably going to be my turn six play. I'm going to play armor mid and set up the Red Hulk. Okay, they have a Red Hulk of their own. We are definitely going to Daredevil and White Widow this turn. So Daredevil here, White Widow here. In all likelihood, I am going to Professor X this lane and then play Red Hulk left. So I can snap here and lock them in for two if I think that's strong enough. I could wait and use the Daredevil advantage I have. But I don't look like I'm in a great position. So we will we will wait and just try to scare them out of the game. And I'm kind of glad I waited now. Because if they play... A Nihilus here. I am in trouble. I still could move Jeff and play Sunspot. They did not play a Nihilus. Okay, I am snapping this. Because I can lock down... this lane, and then we can play Red Hulk. Yikes, look at that Cosmo. <laughs> oh, look at that Cosmo, that's hilarious. Okay, so we're going to do the more unexpected play, which is challenge mid. Since they, in all likelihood, will be expecting uh, me to challenge left. So I think they play Red Hulk left. But that could also run afoul with a potential Sean. So this is kind of just a guessing game. Oh, because they can still move their Jeff as well. Oh, this is a guessing game. Okay, we'll stick with my gut. Oh, nice. Stuck with my gut and it paid off. Yeah, this was all just a, a gut reaction of where they were going to potentially play with all of that extra energy people once you have a large location they think you are less likely to play in that location so that is ultimately why we went with this route uh this deck is okay and here you are not so sure that that's my final verdict it's it's not it's not great but it's also not bad no so i showcased a handful of white widow decks uh, this was a highlight video, so I probably included a loss in there anyway. But I also said whether the decks were worth using or not. There are a couple I want to explore more, which the editor me will make clear in the video. And until next time, take care. So my final verdict is that White Widow is a very good card if you are a fan of junk, control, or affliction type decks. So if you are, I'd encourage you to use your keys to pick her up. And if not, you can pass on her.